that was um, not the most fluent of performances, and probably 36 points rather platters as a winning margin. Did you establish that? Ah. Uh. I don't know, I don't, it was a scrappy performance. It was a scrappy game, I think, from both teams. You know, I don't think both teams were at their best today. Um, you know, but I did feel that you know, we were good in a lot of areas. You know, I thought we showed some real positive signs. Um, you know, some of our go forward you know, was really good coming out of yardage. Uh, you know, got back to playing direct and running hard. And, and some of the, uh, the shape that we played in good ball was, was excellent. I thought we executed some really nice uh, play. And uh, we caused Sheffield with some problems off the back of it. We, we made some good decisions with the ball and, and executed some, some, some good pieces of play. Uh, but there were other times there where we were a little bit loose with our play. You know, some of our execution and skill wasn't quite where it needed to be. Um, you know, but yeah, it was, it, it was a scrappy contest, there's no doubt about it. But I think there was still a lot of positive and encouraging signs from the performance. You know, we still scored 52 points, which I think it's a reflection of some of the, the attacking prowess that we displayed out there today, even though we weren't quite clinically at our best. Um, you know, defensively, we were, we were decent. You know, there were some times here, I think Sheffield caused us a couple of problems around the ruck a couple of times, but um, I thought overall we handled uh, most of the stuff that they threw at us. Again, they were probably a bit scrappy themselves in what they were delivering, so it was just an overall scrappy contest, I think. But. Uh, you know, like I said, for us, very, very pleased. Uh, at the end of the day, today was just about getting a result to secure our top four place, which we've done today. Um, so we now know that we do go to the qualifiers, and uh, we're still on course to, to finish in the top two if we can take care of the next two games. So that's what, that's what today was about, and we delivered on that. Um, kind of David Jarrell and Summer, particularly perhaps in that first 15, 20 minutes, yeah. which is pretty exciting for Summer, isn't Yeah, it? I thought Jared uh, had some real positive contributions today. I thought, like I said, he, he had an influence in a, in a couple of those uh, early tries, scoring one himself. He, he set up a couple as well. And then, uh, again, it was Jared that delivered the final pass on, on a couple more tries in the second half for Ben Halliwell. So I thought Jared Salmon, you know, um, had, had a lot of positive uh, contributions today with the ball in here. Um, some of his kicking game as well was excellent, and, and his goal kicking again was excellent. So that was a good day all round for, for Jared. I thought he, his performance was good. Um, you know, like I said, yeah, but there was a lot of other uh, good contributors out there in, in the team. And um, yeah, like I said, overall, very, very pleased with, with the overall performance in there. Matt Davis got man of the match. Yep. Um, his first game back in a long while. Yeah. And, um, he looked like he was itching to get into it. Oh yeah, he was, mate. He's been he's been itching for a few weeks, to be fair. So um, no, I knew he was ready to come back into the fold. And the reality was, we had to we had to make some changes to the team, David, because we we sort of probably you know we got a result here at home against Benetton a couple of weeks ago. We weren't quite at the, the standards that we expected. Just dropped off a slight slight uh, bit there, and then obviously we were disappointing at Hulk Hour last week. You know, so there were some encouraging signs in the second half. Up, up there, but overall it was a, a disappointing day for us. So I felt we had to make some changes this week. Obviously, I started with Lewis, Lewis Beanie this week, which was great. He did, earned his first start for the season. He's been coming off the bench for us, but he, he got a start. We introduced John Bedetsa making his debut today. Obviously, Matt Davis coming back from, from injury, and, and Eddie Batty got a recall as well uh, today. So it was a, a little bit of a mix up you know, there through the team just to, to freshen it up a little bit. And I, and I felt we I uh, thought we saw some positive contributions from all those players and um, you know, and the, and the rest of the players were out there. I, I felt overall it was, a, it was a better control performance than it was last week. Um, but again, there's still a lot of improvement uh, within us uh, as we move forward. But it's, it's like anything, you know, we've been so good for so many weeks. We've had a little slight drop off now these last few weeks. And then, you know, like I said, yeah, a bit off against Fev, a bit worse against Old I think we picked up a little bit today and it's just now building it back again these next two weeks as we come into the qualifiers. So, you know, the, the focus this week will be about being better again uh, at Rochdale and then being better again in the final game against Batley and then hopefully the, we'll have a little bit of momentum and, and a bit of confidence back in continuity and, and away we go into the next competition. What's the news on the injuries? I spoke briefly as well. You reckon we've more weeks? Yeah, yeah. So we've yeah we've had a, a few few uh, obviously injured people at the moment. Uh, yeah, Barto we hopeful will, will be uh, returning hopefully for the for the first round of the Super Eights. That's yeah. hopeful. Um, you know, James Cunningham potentially around the middle of that, that middle eight campaign. Hopefully, same with Matt Gar side. Uh, obviously, Dalton Grant we know is out for the season. Uh, Tom so Spence, the season? Dalton Grant. Yeah, he's, he's, out, he's been out injured with the Achilles, and obviously given the odds, so he's, he's, he's out for the season, he won't feature. Um, Tom Spencer, hopefully he's going to be in contention next week. 
Um, obviously, Mark Iwani will be back in contention next week because he's, he's served his two-match ban. Um, so we've got a couple of bodies available next week, which is good. I'm trying to think who else has got a knock at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Kieran Dixon, yeah, took a knock to the uh, to his jaw last week uh, uh, in the game against Hull KR. It's, okay. it's shown up um, with some, some scans and testing this week that he has got a crack in his jaw. So we're not too certain yet exactly. This. He's got to go see another specialist on Monday. Um, and we'll, we'll find out further news on that, but that's why he obviously wasn't available today. We're hopeful it's not going to be a long-term thing, but we'll get some more news on that next week, hopefully. Um, and, and that's where we're at the moment. It hasn't been a great year for us this year with injuries. To be honest, no, just got that the he missed out this week. Did Mark? Yeah, that was just uh, that one. He wasn't injured this week. He just missed out. Yeah, and that's about it. So I'm injured. So Rochdale next week is going to be a different type of battle. They're very strong and physical, aren't they? Yeah, Rochdale. No, they're an aggressive team, aren't they? They're very aggressive. They're very uh, certainly aggressive defensively. They, they get up, they get in here, they try and wrap the other, they try and disrupt you. Um, that's the type of style of play they have. Um, yeah, they've got some decent players there too. Some, some decent skill and can play play some decent shape at times. So yeah, it's going to be a challenge. It's, it's us back on the road again, and we're going to have to make sure that we're better again next week because uh, they're going to be very determined. I mean, they're in that relegation battle now, so they've got a lot to play for, a lot to fight for. So, but so do we. We still fight for a top two finish, and we're going to have to be better next week, I think, against Rochdale if we're going to come away with the spoils. That's for sure. It's quite an interesting end to the season because the four teams below how they are. Seem to play a plus part, seem to play each other every week. Yeah. Great for us because it means that they can be further behind. Yeah, well, reality is, mate, I've always said it a few weeks ago, there's going to be plenty of twists and turns. So, um, yeah, the reality is, is these next two weeks are going to define the outcome of the final three places. Uh, you know, obviously, Hockey have secured it, we've secured it. Um, are, going to, are going to determine the, the final two places, I have to say, but also where the, the, the three teams, ourselves, Featherston, Halifax, Toulouse, where we're going to fit, you know, second, third, fourth. So uh, there's a lot to play for, absolutely. Are you surprised that Toulouse have lost four in a row? No, not at all. No, I, I, I'll be honest, I called it early in the season. I said, uh, you know, I said, obviously, Toulouse coming up, it's going to be a big, you know, obviously, transition for them coming into championship and playing. Yeah, you know, the level they've got to play week in, week out, and, and they were pretty fortunate to lose. I think that they, you know, went injury free pretty much for that first half of the season. Um, I know that when we, we played down here and beat them at, on uh, Good Friday, um, you know, they, I think they might have wanted one player out, out injured, so they've got a full healthy squad for such a long period. And fair play to them, you know, they probably uh, took a few teams by surprise, and I think they performed better than I had anticipated them to perform. Uh, in that first half of the season, and then obviously they've just fell away down the back end. And the reality is that they've had some injuries to key personnel, uh, which has hurt them, and they just haven't had the body to, to replace them. And um, it's unfortunate for them because they've been, like I said, a, a breath of fresh air to the championship. They play an exciting brand of rugby. Um, you know, they're a good team to watch, and uh, but they've obviously just lost their way a little bit and fallen off the horse. But the, the, the thing for them is they've still got two games to turn it around. But I'm not uh, surprised that this has happened because there was going to be a, a point of the season where they would cop some injuries and they'd be tested then because their squad size is not the biggest and uh, they've obviously not been able to handle it as well as they thought they might have been able to. So, um, but yeah, but we'll soon see them because they're still, in, they're still in the mix, aren't they? They're not out of it yet. So, you know, I know they play whole crowd this week and Bettis and play Halifax. So, you know, it's still, I don't know, I don't know how it's going to finish, I really don't. It's, it's exciting, that's the great thing about it, it is exciting. It's the same with the relegation battle, who's going to go down? I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, Dewsbury have just you know, come to life, haven't they, and got themselves out of that. But then there's still another seven games in that eights, which, you know, they've got to win games and stay up, so there's, there's plenty to play for. Yeah, and looking at the four Super League teams likely to be in the middle eight. Yeah. Two, once again, two big name teams are going to be in there, probably. Yeah. Warrington probably catch one. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree. But which makes the middle eight that much more exciting because there are marquee names from Super League mm. going to be battling to save their Super League lives. Absolutely. It makes the challenge more challenging for obviously teams in the championship because you've got some, some quality quality teams coming down. But again we're confident in how and how we're going about our business. You know, I know that we've got a team here that is capable of uh, 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 of causing some surprises in this next competition. Um, you know, we've got that, that within us, we've got some really quality players, we're a quality team, and, and, uh, and I, I'm confident when we get to that next stage um, that we will surprise a few people. Um, 
you know, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited about the challenge ahead, and uh, I know the players are, are excited, and, and a lot of them have got a point to prove. You know, that they are good enough to play Super League, and that they should be playing Super League. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing how they handle this next this next level and next next level of competition, which is going to be again another exciting journey. And it's good to see so many of the current squad signing on, not just for next year but for the year after yeah. as well. Yeah. Show you a level of continuity that's almost unheard of in the history of London rugby league. Yeah. Well, it's well certainly since I've been here. I mean, I know this is my third year now, and. Uh, you know, if I look at the turnover in personnel, obviously when I first joined the club, obviously I was assistant coach then, but I know there was a hell of a lot of new faces got brought in for that 2015 season. At the end of that season, you know, as much as, you know, there were some good players there, we retained some, but I had to bring in, you know, 12, 13 new faces for 2016. Um, so there was a 50% turnover of squad there. Uh, then we got through 2016, started to build some, you know, put some foundations in place, started to build the, the, the ethos and the culture and, and and a winning successful team, and then I still, I still lost 50% of the squad uh, and had to bring in, you know, 14 new faces this year. So it's, you know, this will be the first time since I've been at the club that realistically, you know, I may only have to bring in two, possibly three players, I may not even have to play, bring any players in. You know, it depends on how. No, exactly. we need to bring them up, oh, if we go to the Super League, then it's a different story. We'll have to yeah. we'll have to get a stronger, deeper squad, and we'll have the funds to do that. So that's a different. We address that when we get there. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, as, as it stands, when you don't know what division you're going to be in, you have to plan for where you're at at the moment, and use the budget that you've got for where you're at, and, and, and plan accordingly. So that's what we're doing. Here. And if we do make the next step up, then we've got, I think, a capable squad as we have. And then you just add another four or five top quality players to that mix. I think they'll give you a chance of competing in your first year in Super League. And then you build off the back of that. And that's what it's about. It's, it's a building process. And, and that's what we're doing here at the moment. We're rebuilding this club, rebuilding this team. And we're, we're taking steps forward year by year. And, and, and like I said, hopefully we'll be a bit better again this season than we were last season. And, and then again, it's going to be better again in the fall season. Hopefully it's back in Super League. Um, and we'll dress up when we go. But as you quite rightly say, it's certainly the first time my, since I've been here, this is my third year, that we'll have true continuity within the squad. Um, and probably even more importantly, because we've got a hell of a lot of them that we're playing in the World Cup this year. So um, we're going to have a very disruptive pre season next season in terms of you know, half, you know, probably you can have nine, ten players playing in that World Cup that aren't going to be available in that first part of pre season. So I think it's even more important that we keep that cohesion within the squad to at least you know that when they do come back in January, the, you know, like you said, you're going to have only a month to prepare for the season, but you know the guys know each other, they know the, they know the systems and structures, of course, you're not trying to bed in, like we've had to do the last two years, 12, 14, 13 new faces into a squad, um, and it takes time to, to get that cohesion together, so um, so again, that's probably another another reason why it's, it's great that we can keep these guys together moving forward. Have you, actually, have you given any thought to the you know, three or four players you might bring in if you get promoted, or is that something that comes up you know, after the fact? So I, I think it comes after the fact. I mean, I, I've got an idea of what I need positionally, yeah. um, you know, for that in, in my head, but in terms of that player, well, we, we've got to see who's available. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. So it's, um, it's not a case of you can't really identify at the moment the, the players. I think you, what we can identify is right. I know what, probably if we go up, what sort of areas of the team we will need to bring in that. A better quality forward to give us a, a boost and strengthen us, um, and then it's a case of then hopefully trying to find those players that, that if they are available. Again, it's end of the season to you know where, where, where your fate's going to be, isn't it? So, yeah, but like I said, we just got to cross that bridge if and when we get to it. This was your first home win against Sheffield since you moved down. That's a little bit special for you. Yeah, you say a few things to mark afterwards. <laughs> ah, mate. I mean, it's, we've got. Do you know what? The, the, the battles that we've had with Sheffield over the, over the last couple of years since they've been here have been, yeah, they've been pretty nip and tuck, haven't they? You know, we've gone there and beat them at their place last year. They beat us down here, and then we we beat them in the summer bash. So, and the year before we beat them in the bash, didn't we? But um, you yeah, know, we lost. Them. Great, we made your comeback. You know? That's that's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that influenced it, but uh, yeah. And then obviously, yeah, you know, this year we we lost away, but then we've won one year at home. So it's yeah, we've got a real good tussle with Sheffield over the last couple of years. So. There seems to be a good relationship between the two clubs. Yeah, no, look, there's, well, there's, there's naturally going to be. You know, I, I, I spent a lot of my career, the back end of my career there. And, um, I think very highly of the, the staff and the players there, the players that are still there, some of them I played with, and um, I've still got a, a close affinity with that club and um, respect for it and what it's doing. It's a shame that it's found itself in the situation it is now where it was building so many good things when I was there and 
and, and ultimately it's just kind of fallen away and they haven't started again. So it's disappointing um, personally to see that because a lot of hard work through myself and other people that were there at the time had to put a lot of the youth structures in place and drive that forward and also the stuff on the field with the team and the playing side. And, um, it's just a shame to see that it's kind of been disrupted and, and having to start again. So, um, but other than that, you know, like I said, yeah, there is a good relationship between both clubs, and like I said, you know, I still get on with Mark. Mark was a, a, a good mentor for me um, in terms of the coaching side of things. So I, I learned a great deal under him in terms of um, a lot of things, really. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty grateful to have worked under him.